this weekend I headed up to one of my favorite places in Pennsylvania, my buddy Mark's cabin. It's located in Clearfield County, which is in the northern central region of the state. If you know PA, you've probably heard the description Philadelphia on the east, Pittsburgh on the west, and Pennsylvania in the middle. For those who may not understand what that is so accurately saying, let me sum it up for you. There are two major cities on opposite ends of the state, roughly five hours apart. Approximately 70 miles outside of each, there's a vast expanse of rural regions that covers the entire latitude of the state. This is where we find some really beautiful rolling hills, small mountain ranges, millions of acres of state game land, and thousands of miles of unpaved double track beckoning. Generally, when I spend weekend time at Mark's, we explore the Kuhana Wild Area or Moshannon State Forest. This weekend, I spent Saturday helping with some upkeep and improvements to the property and cabin, enjoyed some good food and company, and spent the night. Sunday, I headed out for a little solo exploration of Bald Eagle State Forest on my way back toward home. I've always been curious about this area, so much so that I bought a purple lizard map of the area last year. This is my first time using it, and I highly recommend buying one if you plan to explore this or any other area they've charted. One of the biggest reasons I share my adventures with you on this channel is so that you can get out and do the same. This means I refuse to consciously trespass on anyone's land and I won't be secretive of the places that I'm driving. Today's journey takes us off pavement almost immediately upon turning off the highway, and I spend hours experiencing the beauty of Bald Eagle State Forest. Center Hall on 144 here, entered Bald Eagle State Forest on Decker Valley Road, and we're not quite here. I haven't seen this uh, private trail system yet, or Synagogue Gap Road, which shows a gate, but we will see what we get. This is supposed to all be dirt road, we left pavement very shortly on a Decker Valley Road. And there could be some high clearance 4x4 roads back in here, which would be all the way up into this area. So we'll take a ride on a Mountain Church Road and uh, see where that gets us up and through here. There might be a little connector on uh, some high clearance 4x4 roads back in this way.
got a gated road to the left and a very long ago blocked off road on the right. Following my map, I came across Mountain Church Road before long. As the name implies, I definitely began ascending a mountain, but I didn't notice a church anywhere. However, it is Sunday, and with all that is going on in the world, my soul finds a lot of peace on these roads today. Near the top of the hill, I spot an open gate, and no forbidding signs, so of course I have to explore. The road ends for me at a private property sign, but I am able to find a place to pull off and a nice rock to enjoy a peaceful lunch. It's kind of a dead end trail off of the main road that we were on there, which uh, at this point is Mountain Church Road and uh, sandstone, uh, sand mountain trail is where I'm parked now and I'm gonna eat some lunch. Beautiful day in the woods, picked up. Some barbecue, mac and cheese, baked beans at a spot just before Center Hall. And uh, let's take a lunch break and keep exploring. the main road that I just turned off of under this dead end. Came out Decker Valley to Mountain Church. Take Mountain Church to the end and see what this tower trail is. I don't think that's accessible for Jeeps, but we'll see. Otherwise, we'll continue to the right, back down into here and maybe find something to do a little more exciting than gravel down in here. Yeah, we're at the end of Mount Church Road. Let's see if there's anything to do down here. Yeah. 
Thank you. Awesome, man. You gotta beat this. Just a few hundred feet into the Little Po Trail, I encounter a nice guy and his dog exploring in his Tacoma. He tells me the trail goes up and dead ends at a cabin just a short way ahead. His underwhelming review didn't discourage me. I was already thoroughly enjoying the trail from just the glimpse of it I've had at this point, and was not disappointed around each bend. never put the Jeep into four-wheel drive on this trail, but ground clearance is definitely key, and some good tires as well. Purple Lizard map I'm using gives me peace of mind that I'm using a great tool to stay on the designated roads and property that I intend to be on. I arrive at a cabin which appears to be used by a hunting club. The trail continues on with no indication I shouldn't follow, so deeper into the woods I go. Eventually, the path becomes crowded with mountain laurel and has detoured around a few fallen trees. On the map, Little Po doesn't connect to anything drivable and appears to fade into the mid-state trail. While I am still on double track here and haven't seen any posted signs suggesting the drivable trail has ended, I decide to turn around and save my paint and avoid the possibility of trespassing. Not surprisingly, the drive out is just as fun as the drive in. Back up at the gravel road, and uh, it's getting pretty late in the day, so I'm probably gonna head home from there. But uh, still, be a couple miles of beautiful dirt road from there. That's where the trail ends this time. This was a beautiful day and a beautiful area to explore. I'll definitely be back. I'd love it if you subscribe, like, and share this video. Feel free to comment below as well if you have any suggestions for where to go in Bald Eagle State Forest or anywhere in Pennsylvania or the surrounding states. Check back soon for some more dirt road therapy.